tonight on DC News Now at 9. And cannabis controversy. I feel like many people in our community that this snuck up on us, right? That all of a sudden there's a sign up. DC moms fight back against plans to open a medical marijuana shop near their children's school. It's going to be another windy one on Wednesday. I'll let you know when things will finally start to calm down. And later, high mortgage rates and low inventory as the spring housing market heats up. Every house that's available on the market today could be absorbed in two weeks. Are buyers ready to battle it out? You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight at 9 o'clock. I'm Chris Flanagan, and we begin in the district where the investigation continues into Sunday's mass shooting in the Shaw neighborhood. And take a look here at your screen. D.C. police are looking for this black infinity. They say it may be connected to that mass shooting. Seven people were shot, two killed. It happened near the intersection of 7th and P Streets. If you know anything about this car or the possible shooters, you're asked to call D.C. police. And at a community meeting tonight, neighbors, well, they raised concerns about that shooting and a nightclub in that area. Our Daniel Hamburg joining us now live tonight. And Daniel, many neighbors there spoke out tonight saying crime there is just unacceptable. Yeah, Chris, many people in this neighborhood are scared to be in this area. This is the intersection right where that shooting happened, where seven people were shot only about a block south of the where of the nightclub that you just mentioned. Uh, this happened at 3.01 a.m. on Sunday. D.C. police say several, if not most, of the seven victims in Sunday's shooting were inside of Play D.C. restaurant and lounge before the shooting happened. Though police don't believe the shooting was a result of anything that happened in the nightclub. Still neighbors at a community meeting tonight voiced frustration and concern about the club that just entered an agreement with the Advisory Neighborhood Commission in January. That agreement requires Play DC to turn down the sound and requires at least two officers to patrol the area for an hour after closing. However, police say there aren't enough officers for the volunteer program for off duty officers. I have to find officers willing to work their 10 hour shift and whatever overtime we make them work and then get off that and go work that. If I have to be out there myself because they were that short, I'll be out there at three o'clock in the morning in front of play. Yeah, yes, there's not enough officers to staff it right now, but there definitely need to be some other solutions to make sure that people are safe at night. And so it, we should point out to you that police say an officer was in the area patrolling only about a block away when they heard the gunshot. So uh, they were actively in this area, despite there not being uh, that extra off duty officer uh, being paid by that nightclub. Uh, D.C. police say their nightlife task force will move a little bit more south to this area because of what happened. We reached out to play D.C. for comment and they have not responded back to us. We're live in Northwest. Daniel Hamburg, DC News Now. All right, Daniel, thank you. Meanwhile, Silver Spring Man has turned himself in for his alleged role in a deadly street racing crash in Rockville. It happened last January in West Goody Drive and Watkins Pond Boulevard. Investigators say Romario Coke was racing another driver when he crashed into a tree and died. We're told that other driver, Aaron Givens, turned himself in two weeks ago. He's been indicted on several charges, including negligent homicide by a vehicle. He is currently out on bond. And all new tonight, pushback against a new medical marijuana shop in D.C.'s Palisades neighborhood. A group of moms filing a letter of protest this week, hoping to put a stop to that new shop. Our reporter, Mario Carbone, live tonight from Palisades. And Mario, uh, those moms, they're really pushing back pretty hard. Yeah, they are, Chris. You can see right now the shop is not open yet, but the sign already up out here as the company awaits to find out if it's approved for that medical cannabis license. And meanwhile, those moms tell me they are concerned mainly with how close this location is to multiple neighborhood schools. This snuck up on us. All of a sudden, there's a sign up. For many parents in the Palisades community, uh, this new business does not belong. This is 319 feet from where my son goes to school. Green Theory is a medical cannabis company and plans to sell cannabis concentrate and gummies here on MacArthur Boulevard. Its application for a license is currently under review by D.C.'s Alcoholic Beverage and Cannabis Administration. Still, some are trying to stop it, arguing it's a danger to students at these five schools nearby. The kids are already talking about 
you know, the store that's opening with gummies and they're going to get gummies. Monday, a group of parents sent this letter of protest to ABCA, asking D.C. to abide by the federal drug-free school zone law, which prohibits drug distribution within a thousand feet of a school. Under D.C. law, cannabis shops can operate within 300 feet of a school. 300, except if you're in a commercial zone, um, and your pre-existing I-71 store, the distance from a school is zero feet. So Earlier this month, the area's advisory neighborhood commission voted to support Green Theory's license after the company agreed to various security measures and promised to do its best to prevent cannabis use outside its store. The folks with the most vested interest in reducing or creating a, as near zero chance of public consumption as possible is Green Theory. Um, we have to comply to survive. And now I did give a call to Green Theory today. No one picked up. Uh, Chris, it's unclear if that letter of protest will make any difference. ABCA has said that right now it's only considering uh, those protest letters from neighborhood advisory commissions, which we know uh, already has said it will support this license here. Reporting in Palisades tonight, I'm Marielle Carbone, DC News Now. All right, we'll certainly see what happens. Marielle, thank you. All right, let's get a first check on the forecast now. Meteorologist Damon Matson in for Janessa tonight. And Damon, the first day of spring uh, really doesn't feel like spring. No, not at all, Chris. We saw those chillier temperatures hang around as we carried them over from Monday and into this first day of the new season. We didn't see much improvement in that regard. You needed a jacket out there. High temperatures only reached into the upper 40s to the west and then closer to DC, Southern Maryland, the I-95 corridor. We were lucky to get to 53, 54 degrees tops. Now, as we go into the night, here we're not cooling off all that quickly as temperatures are still in the 40s for the most part. We have a couple of exceptions like Frederick hanging on to 52 and that's part of, partly because of some clouds that are overhead and also because we have some wind continuing to move things around out there. Now compared to earlier in the day, it certainly is much less breezy as we head into the night. We are going to catch a small lull in the wind overnight, but as we enter into the day on Wednesday, well, that wind is going to pick up once again. So with temperatures set to drop into the upper 30s, low 40s, and the wind then kicking back up as we see those chilliest temperatures. Yeah, be prepared for another chilly start to the day. Get the kids bundled up to head out to the bus stop as we begin the day on Wednesday. Now, just how much is that wind set to pick back up as we go throughout the day? Then tomorrow we'll have a full look at your forecast coming up here in just a bit. All right, Damon, thanks. Well, in Virginia, sitting in Governor Glenn Youngkin's desk tonight, it's a final version of a bill that could bring back skill games to the Commonwealth. There are those slot-like gaming machines you often see in gas stations. If signed by Youngkin, skill games would face stricter regulations than before, like capping how many games a business can have and enforcing age limit. Receipts from the machines would also be taxed at 25%. Well, the Howard University men's basketball team took on Wagner College tonight in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Howard students who didn't travel to the game, well, they got to catch all the action from a watch party here in D.C. It's very inspiring also to see them make it to the tournament two years in a row after, beat, after ending a 16-year drought. All right, certainly a great game out there in Dayton, Ohio. Sports Director Derek Forrest here in Derek. Boy, what a wild finish. Oh, yeah, this one came down to the wire and the way it started. We didn't think we were going to get here for the second year in a row. The Howard Bison found themselves in the NCAA tournament Tuesday. They had a matchup with Wagner to get to the round of 64 later in the week in Charlotte. And at one point in the game, Howard found themselves down by 17. They would cut the deficit all the way down to three with a chance to tie the game to send it to overtime. But the Bison couldn't convert after three attempts. So the final score from Dayton ended up being 71 to 68 as Wagner squeaks by Howard, marking an end to an up and down season for the Bison. A tough way to lose the game. Howard, they finished the year with an 18 and 17 record. And for a second year in a row, they were able to win the MEAC Conference Tournament to get themselves into the tournament. 
We're going to have all the highlights and postgame reaction later tonight. Chris. All right. Great season, though, Derek. Thanks. Well, and this warning tonight from Maryland's Attorney General as March Madness gets underway. Sports bettors, be wary of sneaky marketing tactics and other tricks that try to persuade you to give up more money than you intend to. So in Maryland, sports betting is only legal through operators that are licensed and regulated by the Maryland Lottery and Gaming Control Agency. Licensed platforms are banned from using terms like risk-free or guaranteed. The AG says if you see that language, do not use those gaming platforms. If you ever have doubts about whether a website, app, or business is licensed, you're encouraged to call the Gaming Control Agency or visit their website directly.